and welcome to this week's preview show coming from Vitality Stadium. BBC Radio Silence Chris Temple is alongside me as we look ahead to another weekend in the Premier League. Here's what's coming up today. We'll go back to last weekend and discuss that 3-0 defeat to Liverpool. We'll also talk about Gavin Kilkenny and his new contract that he signed this week. And finally, we'll look ahead to tomorrow's game at Stamford Bridge. Well, let's rewind the clock six days and go back to that 3-0 defeat against Liverpool here at Vitality Stadium. Chris, it, were, it wasn't the scoreline that fans would have wanted, but the first half an hour, largely encouraging. I think, I think a, a degree of perspective is definitely needed. Um, 3-0 loss to Liverpool at home. Um, if you take every, every other circumstance out of it, the previous run, the significant injury during the game, um, most teams would say that that's probably about the expected result for a team like Bournemouth at home to a team like Liverpool in the form they're in. So yes, OK, there are some uh, extenuating circumstances. As you say, Nathan Ake's departure after half an hour obviously had an impact on the game, not just because immediately Liverpool scored while Bournemouth was still, I guess, mentally and sort of, you know, organisationally getting themselves back together. But it had been OK up to that point. Liverpool started well. Bournemouth came back into it after about 15 minutes, started to play a bit of stuff of their own. Um, and of course, the longer that you can keep it nil-nil and the longer you can sort of string a few decent moves together, you're growing confidence, you just need a break somewhere um, and unfortunately the break came in the wrong direction in, in terms of Nathan Ake limping off which is you know a huge blow for the, the, the short to medium term um, but in terms of that game last week of course once Nathan Ake goes off and then the second one you know it's an absolute killer um, and then from then on it was a, it was a, a difficult game, it, hard mentally for the players to come back into it, hard for the supporters to really find too much to, to sort of cling on to in terms of creating an atmosphere um, and in the end Liverpool were you know absolutely coasted the second half it was I'm not even sure they did second gear in the second half so um, but yeah on the face of it that is a scoreline that lots of teams will fall foul of this year and I think there's a lot of you know a lot of reaction because of the the way the recent run has been going um, you know and it's the fifth one in a row and everyone's sort of you know the doom and gloom gets a little bit lower but I think as that as an isolated game regardless of everything else I, I'm not sure that that's that's uh, you know hugely beyond what could easily have been expected. And as you say, when you focus on, on the isolated game itself, there's no denying Liverpool are a fantastic team. There's, there's you know, plenty of proof why they're top of the table. Salah was on form, Firmino did well, and, and they looked a, a classy outfit, didn't they? Yeah, and you, you, know, you have to be, as we've said many times before, you have to be absolutely your best and hope everything goes right and hope they have an off day. And Liverpool aren't having many off days, I'm afraid, at the moment. Even switching personnel around, resting one or two, bringing one or two back. We didn't even see Mane get off the bench, as we mentioned last week, he probably wouldn't. Um, you know, and they, they suffered an injury problem themselves. You know, they took Lovren off and had to reshuffle their back four. But when you've got the resources Liverpool have got, it doesn't seem to make too much difference. So, you know, brilliant team, best team, you know, in Europe possibly at the moment. Um, so losing 3-0 is, is no disgrace. That won't be, as we've said before, that won't be the games that the season is decided on. Um, but of course, you know, it just, particularly, the, I mean, the, 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 the biggest sort of uh, issue that came out of it was the Nathan Ake injury and obviously Callum Wilson towards the end as well. But, but Ake, a lot more significant. And mentioned Ake there, he has gone for a scan and it doesn't seem perhaps as bad as we all first feared when we saw him hobbling around, not able to walk. He left the ground on crutches and the scan has come back and it's not going to be too long term, is it? When you, I mean, four to six weeks probably, um, which is a lot of games though. At this time of year, that is a lot of games. Um, it's the, you know, a terrible time of year to have an injury like that for, for someone as key as Nathan Ake is. Let's remember, he's played every Premier League game since he signed here permanently. I think he's only not started one. He came on as a sub in that. Um, you know, for, for the amount of physical work he gets through, the athleticism he has, you know, to, to be have stayed fit and to be, you know, Premier League week in, week out, playing internationals as well. I know he doesn't play all the time for Holland, but um, training with internationals, you know, it's a huge credit to him as a, a player um, and you know obviously typically he comes off the back of Steve Cook's absence as well so when we <coughs> excuse me when we talk about the solidity of they, that partnership they formed this season now you're without both of them so yeah for, for Nathan Ake huge blow but he's a positive character um, you know seen him knocking around he's still got a smile on his face um, of course there's one or two uh, news lines this week about Chelsea in the future which Bournemouth fans wouldn't want to read probably but in terms of the, the injury situation just the, the latest and probably the most you know significant of, of all the injury problems they've had. And with Nathan Ake and Steve Cook out it's a, it's a great opportunity for the likes of Chris Me Mepham, Jack Simpson to come in and you know stake a claim for their place in the team when the other two come back fit. Yeah it's, it's a tall order against a team like Liverpool anyway but when you look at the back four that play in the second half last week um, you know in terms of getting minutes this season Diego Rico by far and away the most experienced. Simon France has only played what four or five games Chris Mepham I think played six Jack Simpson's hardly played at all in the uh, in the Premier League so again for someone like Jack Simpson to have to suddenly you know strap on his parachute and, and come into the team 
just you know, can you just go and mark Mo Salah uh, or Firmino or you know all these it's other not players. Not the easiest job in the world. Exactly, line, is it? just pop on and do that when you know he wouldn't be expecting to come on at all because centre backs are not an area that that Bournemouth have had problems. So, yeah, it's a, it's a big learning curve for for Mepham and Simpson. I'll be interested to see what Eddie does at Chelsea, whether he goes again with with Mepham and Simpson as a partnership or whether he moves Simon Francis into centre half and brings Jack Stacey in, who's obviously had more minutes this season. Um, you know, has played away at Tottenham and, and has had some big game experience as well. Um, I, I just wonder in this situation whether that might be sort of, you know, possibly the, the sort of percentage call is 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 maybe to play Francis. Um, and Chris Mepham, it's worth pointing out, by the way, he's right footed, but it, at Brentford he played mostly on the left hand side of, of the centre back or back three. So moving Chris Mepham to the left of the two centre backs um, wouldn't be an issue. Some people prefer a left footer and Jack Simpson is a left footer. So uh, that, that will be an interesting selection choice tomorrow. Absolutely. And, and just moving on to a bit more positive news this week. Gavin Kilkenny, he signed a new contract and from what we've seen of him, he, he looks a, like he could be a very good player. Yeah, what a, what a rise he's had. You know, started the season in the under-21 squad in pre-season um, and suddenly, you know, due to circumstances, found himself in the senior squad and has absolutely taken his chance to, to ink himself in that squad and be a, a realistic option for Eddie Howe. You know, probably not this season in the Premier League, but he's played in the League Cup games against, uh, against Forest Green and against Burton um, uh, and, you know, did pretty well. You know, pre-season impressed. Um, so and obviously he's got himself Ireland under 21 international uh, recognition as well so he's one who you know you look at the likes of Jack Simpson you look at Mark Travers and a couple of others who've come through the system in in the last couple of years to, to make it into the Premier League squad um, Gavin Kilkenny you know and he's He's a bit different to you know a few of the other players that Bournemouth have got. You know that I mean, you think of sort of Lewis Cook or someone like that as, as quite similar. Um, so yeah, central midfield with a couple of the central midfielders. You know, with the greatest of respect to the likes of Andrew Sermon and, and not so much Dan Gosling, but you know, in terms of uh, aging, the aging process, I guess someone like Gavin Kilkenny coming up to, to provide a homegrown option. Um, yeah, really good and great news for him to get a, a fully deserved long-term contract. And this week we've seen, you know, the likes of Gavin Kilkenny out on the training ground with the first team. We've seen Jaden Anthony, Jordan, Zamora, Zeno, Ibsen, Rossi, so many under-21s out there training with the first team. Of course, we've got a lot of injuries, but what a great experience for them. That's only going to enhance their development. Has to, of course it has to. And, you know, Eddie, again, is very clever with that. He'll, um, he doesn't want too many numbers on the training ground. He doesn't want to just throw out chances to train with the first team like confetti you have to be um, you know, have to be up to the standard you have to earn it Alex Jobre of course as well Christian Sadie a couple of other names to throw in as well and I, I've read a couple of things this week saying oh, why not give Christian Sadie a chance in the first team he's 17 years of age it's an absolutely massive leap to the first team so everyone just, I think everyone needs to calm down a bit about Christian Sadie he was on the bench once at Tottenham of course out of circumstances because of the late um, a late withdrawal so yeah I think it, Adam Smith's illness yeah, exactly. was so, very last minute exactly so he found himself on the bench by more by luck than judgment I think um, not to say he's not a great talent. He's got a great goal here in the under 18s in, in midweek, of course, in the youth cup game. Um, you know, exciting talent, absolutely. But he's not the one to throw in into the Premier League at the moment. Um, you know, Alex Dobre probably having been out on loan is probably closer. Um, you know, whether he needs to be on the bench this weekend. Callum Wilson is a wait and see, I think, um, in terms of his situation for the weekend. So, yeah, but great as you to go back to your original point. Great for them. Great experience. But again, it will be carefully managed by Eddie. And this situation with injuries is to say, OK, well, there are one or two little areas in the squad at the moment that we're a bit light in, so here's your chance. Absolutely, here's your chance indeed. Now then, next up for Eddie Howe's first team squad is the trip to Chelsea, and the manager has been speaking in his pre-match press conference. Yeah, we're in a difficult moment of the, uh, the injury list, there's no denying that. Yeah, it was relatively good news on Nathan Scan. With these injuries, you do have to be careful. You never quite know with a hamstring whether it's fully healed or not, so we'll look at six weeks. Well, it depends because at one stage it looked like Adam might have to have an operation on his ankle. An operation would have meant maybe 10 to 12 weeks. Hopefully he's got away without having the operation, which halves the time. So, yeah, Callum, again, I don't think it's a, a serious injury, so he had a... It felt, tightness in his hamstring. Got a chance, yeah. Josh has um, come through the various things that we need him to come through. Um, hasn't had a great deal of time on the training pitch, but uh, what he has done, he's done well. We still believe in the players that we have. Um, uh, they have to step up now and show their qualities. Individually, each of them will believe they're good enough to play regularly in the Premier League. Got no, no denying their confidence levels in themselves. I've handled these situations before and I can do it again. So it's about being consistent with the players. It's about not ripping up everything that you believe in. Uh, it's about not, not listening to the noise around you, um, getting the best out of every single player that we have here. That's probably my biggest task um, and we'll be fine. Well, that was Eddie Howe speaking in this morning's press conference. Chris, we've, uh, we've done it before against Chelsea, but it's going to be a, a big ask tomorrow, isn't it? 
It is. Um, I'm going to find a couple of stats for you to, to try and sort of provide some positivity. I mean, Chelsea have lost three of the last four Premier League games. Um, you know, the Everton loss last weekend was a, was a pretty poor one for them. Um, obviously, they lost at home to West Ham as well. Now, that's not a result that many people will have seen coming. Obviously, David Martin, who played in goal for West Ham, had the game of his life that day. And, and that's the sort of thing you need to happen. You need something like that where you nick a goal and your goalkeeper saves everything. Um, and, you know, we've, Aaron Ramsdale is quite capable of saving everything. So, that you know, that's the sort of result that can be thrown thrown in. The, both times Bournemouth have won at Chelsea, they've had absolutely no chance you know, pre-match on paper. Uh, the 4-0 here last season was just just ridiculous, wasn't it? I mean, even now you look back at it and go, did that, did that actually happen? And you look at the team Chelsea had on paper on that night and it was an unbelievable team. I don't think anyone saw that one coming, oh, did they? And that was, again, it feels like an eternity ago, but it was January and that was the last time the two teams met. So um, the, the only negative of that is that only Ryan Fraser and possibly Joshua King from that 11 are likely to start this weekend. You know, you think of the team that played that night with Boric and Klein and Stanislas and Brooks and King were leading the attack and Gosling and Serma were in midfield and Adam Smith obviously as well and Cook and Ake. So I've almost reeled the whole team off that aren't available there. Um, but, you know, Chelsea are in transition this season. They've started to find their feet a little bit. Obviously, they've had their transfer window issues that they were banned from signing any players, although it's quite handy when you've got a £50 million player that you'd already signed who was out on loan at Borussia Dortmund who effectively is a new player in Christian Pulisic um, to come in. Uh, obviously, Kovacic, they, uh, was, his loan was made permanent as well. So they sort of had a couple of new Jewish players, if you like. Um, but, you know, Frank Lampard has given the chance to, to young guys. Great to see Tammy Abraham. He's been, you know, obviously getting goals in the championship for the last couple of seasons. So great to see him take his chance. Um, and a couple of the England boys, the sort of English players, are well known to Aaron Ramsdale. <coughs> Excuse me. He's good friends with Mason Mount. Uh, Aaron Ramsdale was telling me actually today that his, his parents are, are good friends with Mason Mount's parents, but it makes him even more determined to make sure Mason Mount doesn't score. Uh, tomorrow, Rhys James, of course, who's been playing right back for Chelsea as well. Um, and in midweek in the, the Champions League against Lille, they decided to go a little bit more sort of experienced and resolute because of the situation of needing to get through. So they brought in Jorginho, they brought in Emerson as well. Uh, so one or two, and Rudiger's back from injury as well. So um, yeah, they've, Frank Lampard's all of a sudden got a few more options. Um, you think of, you know, Eden Hazard has always been the scourge of Bournemouth, I've got to say. So uh, to take on a Chelsea team without Hazard in it, um, certainly I think Simon Francis will be uh, one of those who's had a bit of a torrid time facing Hazard in recent w recent seasons. So he'll be pretty pleased about that. But you mentioned that game against Lille in the week. Will, will, they have, will they have had, you know, concentration on that game and less time to prepare for this game on the weekend as well? Will that be on their mind at all? Uh, well, I mean, uh, like anything, if you've played on a Wednesday and your opposition haven't, then of course a lot of those players will be, you know, will have that game a little bit in their legs. And it was a tight game in the end because obviously Lille scored and just made an interesting finale in that game as well. Um, Chelsea's, you know, they, they haven't steam. I mean, they've steamrolled a couple of teams this season, particularly in the League Cup. They hammered Grimsby, didn't they? But you know, a lot of their results have been by the odd goal. Um, Bournemouth, three of the last three away games, by the way, have been decided by just one goal. So uh, it has been tight. Um, of course, we men should mention the Frank Lampard-Harry Wilson connection as well, because Harry Wilson was in the Derby team managed by Frank Lampard last season that got to the, the playoffs and lost in the final. So Harry Wilson will know about Frank Lampard and his methods as well. Um, but you know, I, I still maintain Chelsea are still in a little bit of transition. Um, you know, it's great for uh, Eddie Howe's a big fan of you know giving young British players a chance, and Frank Lampard had to do that because of circumstances, really. Um, so you know, there, there's certainly comparisons between the two in terms of the managers who are the two youngest in the the Premier League. By the way, Frank Lampard's I think seven months younger than Eddie, so uh, there was at last somebody younger than Eddie Howe. But uh, yeah, Chelsea, their fans, you know, start the season. Frank Lampard's such a hero there. He gets a bit of a, I guess, a bit of a stay of execution when it's, not a stay of execution, but it gets a bit more leeway when results didn't uh, start spectacularly. But there they are, sort of, you know, sandwiched between City and United at the moment. Um, through in the Champions League, you know, things are, are going probably about as well as they could be expected to there. And, you know, as you say, he's, he's giving these youngsters a chance, perhaps not through choice initially, but they're doing well. They've got Tammy Abraham scoring goals, exactly as you say. And, you know, they're, they're an exciting team, aren't they? No. Yeah, I mean, you've got to remember Chelsea a few seasons ago finished 10th. You know, in the year that Bournemouth won there in the in the league, they finished 10th. So, you know, Chelsea fans have had a bit of an up and down roller coaster of the last few seasons uh, since they won it last. Obviously, Sari came in and, and you know, didn't fare that well and has, has gone. And Frank Lampard now, you know, I think 
it's a clever appointment by Chelsea as well, given the circumstances they were going to be facing, that they, they couldn't sign any players. They were going to have to use some of the, you know, and you think of someone like Nathan Ake, if he was still in the Chelsea ranks, he would be in the first team there by now. Um, you know, so they have so many British players, it's many, many players out on loan. Uh, and now it's a chance for some of those, like Tammy Abraham, who served his apprentice away from uh, Chelsea, has come back in. Even Pulisic, you know, he, he learned his trade away at Dortmund um, last back end of last season and has come in now and absolutely hit the ground running. So. Uh, it's been great to see some of their, you know, Tamori as well, who's got himself in the England setup as well by virtue of, of coming in and getting some games. So it's, it's great for England. You know, the, the England age groups are absolutely littered with Chelsea players. Um, so, yeah, brilliant for English football. And I think Chelsea fans, you know, are, are patient at the moment with this sort of uh, evolution of their club. And in terms of our team and our team news, Joshua King could be in contention, which would be a massive beast to everyone. Yeah, I think he's pretty close, um, which would be great. Uh, Callum Wilson is, is touch and go, maybe unavailable. So, uh, you know, one for one there, really. Um, obviously, Harry Wilson wasn't eligible last week, so he'll come back in. Um, Ake out. So, as we mentioned earlier, what they do with the, the defensive shape, where the Jack Stacey comes in. Um, Dan Gosling, I, I just had a feeling last week Dan Gosling might get thrown in last week just for that bit of drive in midfield and experience. I've got a feeling again he might get thrown in tomorrow, but it didn't happen last week, so it probably won't happen tomorrow. But I think a few people are calling for someone like him who is all action, all energy around the pitch. And just finally, what's that score prediction? <clears throat> I'm going to haul out a 1-1 just because the games have been tight. You know, there have been a couple of good days at Chelsea. Maybe it could be the day to end the run. Maybe it could be. Well, if you are going up to Chelsea, then have a very safe journey. If not, make sure you listen to Chris on BBC Radio Silent for all the updates. Bye for now.